Well, my first instrument was the piano. I just loved the piano as a little girl, just a com intense desire. And I begged my mom to buy a piano. She said, why don't I buy an organ? And I'm like, no, please buy a piano. So she thought the organ would be more exciting because you could do more things with it. But I just almost from birth had a love of the piano so much. Well, the idea of mentors is a really nice idea for me, but I think for most artists, it's really an inner journey. You, I would love to have someone tell me what to do, to tell you the truth, and take care of me, and, and tell me the path, but truly the, the path of an artist is finding your interest and then following with that, and Hopefully there's support along the way, but you do what you have to do. And there's not really a choice on being an artist or a composer in my case. I, it's something I have to do. So. Who connected me to jazz? I guess my first step was who connected me to the blues. And I'm not quite sure, I suppose there is the first concert I ever went to was Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, and uh, I'm not quite sure how I got there, but I love their music. And about the same time, I was introduced to B.B. King's Live at Cook County Jail. And again, I'm not quite sure how it came into my life, uh, but I just felt the soul in the music that I wasn't getting in classical or in um, modern music at that time. That's an interesting question to ask someone their first paying gig or first paying job, but I think I was always playing the piano. As a little girl, I think it was in like third or fourth grade, I played the piano for the school glee club. Nowadays they normally hire someone to do that. I played for all the school programs, you know, the Broadway plays at the high school. Uh, I was in the band, we were always doing those those performances as well. I did a few weddings. I, I just, whenever I had the opportunity to play the piano, that's what I wanted to do. Every summer, I set time aside to explore new composers, not, not new composers, but to, comp to explore other composers. Right now, I'm really digging into Gershwin a little bit. How was he able to create, especially at that time, the sound of America? He created impartial by listening to those around him. He was able to distill the sounds of America at that time into kind of a something that was very representative in many ways for that time. Now, how can we do that for this century? That's my curiosity. That music sounds of that time. It sounds of you know, the whole birth of that was going on, or rebirth, that strong growth that America was going through at that time. What about this millennium? What should our music sound like today? Those are the questions I'm always asking. But I always look to, you know, Monk, I think, was the, I can call him like the first modern jazz composer. I don't know if other people feel the same way. I always look at his work. It's blues-based, but it's very, he had his own way of doing it. I always look at Count Basie because he can make a single note swing, and that's kind of something I, I aspire to as well. But I'm always looking at other people. I'm playing um, a little Chopin. I'm playing a little Beethoven right now, uh, Rachmaninoff. Um, last summer I played the Stravinsky Ballets. Always trying to I like to be very omnivorous with music. I really think a lot about the side men that I work with, but really they are the other leaders that I work with. I've always said I wanted to work with the very best people who are also nice, and so I have. <laughs> I've been very lucky that way. I think a lot about what I bring to the table and what each other player brings to the table. So that would, I wouldn't put together a band of everyone from California. 
Um, because my music is blues based, I try and have certain performers that have a blues background. Uh, I just think of, about their whole, who they are, because a musician isn't just their instrument, and everyone at a certain level is proficient. So what do they bring as a person? And so I think of where they were raised, how they were raised, what kind of family, uh, as well as their playing. And it's, I'd like it to be complementary to what I'm doing on the piano and how that can balance those sounds. I believe in living a creative life. I like to s do anything to stimulate it in, in, I mean, that's the fun stuff. That's the fun stuff is the creative part. I don't specifically do anything to prompt my creative process. Although I notice that if I say I'm gonna practice a lot, then I immediately wanna go and do something creative <laughs> rather than practice. But. I think that the music is inside of me, and if I just sit down and spend time, then it kind of tells me what to do or what needs to be done. I feel like if I just show up, that it's there, and I don't have to go to any, you know, cross through any process. I know when I begin a song, and I'm aware when I am done with the composition. But that time in between, I try and keep track of like how I came up with this or where it came from and it's just it just comes I don't really know how or why I'm thankful though it's a wonderful experience Hi, I'm Lisa Hilton. For more videos, go to jazztimes.com.